Hooray. Okay. Go for it. Okay, so when you, yeah. By the way, I'm just a passive observer of this meeting primarily. Emily typically runs this meeting. Yeah. Okay. So one Emily Emily merged the output requests. So I think we are ready for for some alpha release, for example. Well, unless there's some other issues that we do not know of. So I don't know who I don't know the process on how that goes, but yeah. So for now, the main branch is is kind of complete with examples for Quarkus and Elidon and Open Liberty and all of that stuff. And yeah, what else? Which other? Yeah. So that's one. Uh, what else is next? And I know there was a discussion about whether we want to carry on with uh, Langchain for future releases or do we create our own thing like Spring AI has done where they have two different branches. One is one with integration to uh, Langchain and then they've got one where they've done everything in-house. Oh, sorry. They Spring AI just has one, right? There's mm -hmm. another product. Let's make sure I'm telling the same thing. Spring AI is Spring AI. And then there's another product called Spring Landchain. Is that the one you refer to? Yeah, but then it's still under is it still part under the Spring AI umbrella? Because last time I checked this, we're still under Spring AI. Oh, I, then then that's something I haven't seen. Uh. So the spring lane chain is the one where you annotate uh, with, I think, the AI services and then specify some configuration and then it injects, you, then you auto-wire it. And it does the exact same thing. It will goes to lane chain, gets the proxy and then injects it for you. Whereas the spring AI, AI one is the one where they've created like a, an API that will connect to a lot of these LLM services. So they've created like their own client interface and and some builders to, to create products. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's another implementation of what LangChain is. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the link to that LangChain for you look at, because it, I, I'm just, I want to make sure we talk about the same thing. <laughs> let, me, let me check. Uh, Okay. Because Langchain for J has its own, there's a basic spring integration, and then there's another library made by um, Thomas something that is uh, a separate, it's more like Corpus Langchain, but for spring. Yeah, there is no reference to Langchain for J from Spring AI. Yeah. That is... <clears throat> But they, they have two things: the yeah, the Spring AI and what Max mentioned from. Damn, you're right. Yeah, the main thing is me right now. Yeah, uh, Thomas Vitale. That's the one I was thinking about. Where is it? John, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure that. Um... We address, I, I think for this call, we there's a request specifically to have Clement and, and, and maybe Max on as well. And I just want to make sure that we hit the topic of why they were asked to join the call. I can't quite remember, but it might have to do with the stability of, of Langchain from an API perspective. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Emmanuel, I, I think you were you were tasked to bring them on, right? Uh, no, I just came up to the Yeah, I, I think what the understood if I, if I, what I to remember but uh, the the questions were about um uh how we want to because uh some of us want to move out from uh long chain itself or to provide long chain as one way to integrate 
uh, and just some kind of dependency commit. Um, and so I, I know that uh, Jan has been, and um, maybe and Buake has been uh, looking at uh, providing some kind of OpenAI AI um, client, I'd say Java client, to, to to so that we could. The, the idea would be to to provide an OpenAI AI client, uh, thinking that OpenAI AI API OS API is going to be uh, the standard de facto, and thus not uh, going all the way to support. Um, I would say every kind of infra um, with their own API and just stay on the uh, OpenAI API. And uh, so the question were about uh, on that part, if I if I remember correctly, about um, what if if we want to add, uh, to adapt to to long term project, uh, given some of the limitation. Uh, of long chain currently, um, because of can the you use of. Can you detail those limitations? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm not sure. So I try to remember because it's, it's not uh, coming from me. <laughs> so uh, one of them uh, seems to be related to long box. Um, there were okay. there were questions about the, the fact that long chain project is using long box, and there were questions about uh, uh, issues with native compilation. So I'm not. So this is foreign country for me. So I, 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 I just try to, to keep back what I understood. Um, but uh, that one of the one of the points was this. The second point was about the fact that long chain was on old GDK, and that uh, small Y is trying to move on to, to uh, I think uh, at least for MP profile to to move on to seventeen or or later. So no, no, it's it's seventeen. It's not later. It's seventeen, and you and you are allowed to stay on eleven if you want. But uh, yeah, so the, there was those two points. Uh, I I can um, answer the the Lombok one. So first, Lombok does not prevent you to compile into native. Um, it would have been a very big limitation for Quarkus, but no, we can make Lombok work in native. Do we like it? No, that's but that's a completely different topic. Now about the usage of Lombok in long chain 4 j Mitro, the lead, has told us that he is looking in removing it, um, probably in a long chain 4 j 2 which should start, we don't necessarily know when, but uh, sooner, than, well, probably 2025, beginning 2025. So, and it's not because of native population issue, it's just because we are not a big fan of Lombok. Uh, well, typically, I hate it, but uh, that's my personal opinion. Um, the second thing about the API. So first, when you mention uh, you can re-implement the OpenAI client, sure. But what about the other APIs that you are going to use, like uh, embedding store, like uh, uh, embedding model? Um, Prompt, uh, prompt augmentations and so on. So it's not only just an LLM client you need, there is a whole set of API around that. And yes, the long chain 4J APIs may not be really stable and that's impossible in, in the AI world to be stable in end of 2024. We don't know what would happen in six months. Uh, you started that work in June, between June and now, things have completely changed and uh, the capabilities of models have changed and more is coming. So it's it's pretty hard to make things completely stable. However, for some part, typically traditional RAG, the APIs that has been defined by Longchain 4J works very well and we didn't change a thing there. The thing is, it continue working. There are some extensions there and there, but uh, but there is no big breaking change. So it's not only an LLM client or an LLM provider client, you need to think about the overall thing. Because if you start doing that, you will have to well, redefine absolutely everything. Now we can start the debate of whether it's time or not to build a spec out of these APIs. My personal opinion is that it's still a little bit too early, uh, but 
Also, it's maturing slowly. It's maturing, so we may start. We can see that it might be something we could imagine in the in the near future. Uh, I can't remember the other question. Uh, yeah, I saw a comment about native compilation. Uh, long chain works perfectly well in native. Depend on the integration you use, of course, because if you use a uh, an embedding store or whatever, which use a client which does not support native, well, in that case, it will require a bit of crafting and arm crafting to make it work. But for all our examples, we have no problem in native with uh, with long chain 4 j Yeah, and I, and I think also the the version, uh, but but I would say general long chain is. The f well, the fact that we we need to find a way to uh, but I, to pl to simplify all the HTTP clients and to try to also to integrate with uh, MP uh, I think it's MPRS client. So I'm not very really <laughs> knowledge knowledgeable, so I'm trying to. So normally there is an SPI that lets you do that for various LLM provider, including OpenAI and Olama and fuses uh, that let you substitute not only the HTTP client, but a lot more. And that's where I believe the, where we cut the SPI was might have not been the right place. And it's something that I think we should we'll consider is having an SPI for just a transport level, um, but not only for the HTTP client huh? uh, that we well, we will start there for sure because that's the easy part. But we may have to look at other things like uh, some of the clients that are used in some embedding stores and so on. Um, start with HTTP and then we can see problem once at a time. Yeah, well, well, uh, I said, uh, uh, because the, the rest end is a bit more than HTTP, but there's also the JSON yeah. serialization, serialization, so. And tracing um, metrics and everything uh, added to that, yeah. So that that's a hard one. And uh, yeah, there were questions about that point. Um, I, 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 I just taking a quick look. I saw there was some kind of SPI in the uh, in the OpenAI dev uh, uh, dev client that is used underneath a long chain, but it uh, still requires profit if I remember correctly. There is some kind of binding, but. Uh, Deep into it about the uh, risk of it. Um, Max has his hand up. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, just a good call. So, I, I, I got uh, called out or raised out on a call with Emily a week or two ago where he raised these issues. I was like, oh, we, we can figure those out, I'm pretty sure. And, and Clement went through it. Yeah, native is not a problem. And, and it feel and I I haven't followed the small rise thing. I, I looked the code today. Um, I can see all the examples are, um, uh, you know, showing how to use this this uh, uh, lang, lang chain FDA, uh in different scenarios, which is which is cool. But it'd be good to understand the the, the goal, right? Because the issues. I think, man, you're saying like, for example, hey, the HTTP protocol or the model, like for example. Langchain for J uh, currently, and this is just an example. It, it, this is not just, a, but since Antonio is here, I'm gonna just use his as a reference. <laughs> so uh, the GitHub models, uh, which is this, you know, uh, nice uh, service, is being added to Langchain for J by um, a guy from Microsoft, and that is depending on the Azure SDK, uh, which is the official SDK from Microsoft side on accessing. You know, makes perfect sense. It's okay to have, but it's really, really bad in a library you want to have across many ecosystems because the Azure SDK is, sorry, I'm very invasive. <laughs> um, so, which is great. So it's great to have one example of it, but it would be nice if instead that that was hard coded to use the Azure SDK. Um, there was a way to kind of, you know, have an SPI to do it. We've done it for the OpenAI with the GitHub models. It feels like, hey, what if we had something similar? And and, and therefore, for example, in Langchain for J, that could be let's call them a clean room version and a 
vendor version or whatever you call it, right? Um, and uh, that's an issue we're seeing in land chain. I think that's that's basically the if you go down to the core, that's the issue you also have. Like, how do we use this library yeah. from there? But, uh, but I, yeah. The Microsoft SDK is actually interesting because it has its own SPI to switch the transport to the client. So actually, it may already work as we want, but not looking at the right yeah, but, the SPI in long chain, but in the SDK. Yeah. But then even more, like, I think, again, I haven't double checked, but if it does as the other client, it will expose reactor. Yeah, they still expose that, but you can change the client. Um, and that's just unfortunate. <laughs> um, on this kind of thing. Um, so I think we have the same goals. Um, and we have some of us are meeting in, in DevOps next week. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys are here, but it would be interesting to maybe find a time during DevOps to figure out what, what would be. Unfortunately, Dimitri is not coming uh, there. Um, but we, I'm, we've talked to him about it before, and he's interested in this stuff happening. It's just how to do it. Um, so if we can find a way, I'm pretty sure we could, uh, it'll be a good way to do it. Um, so yeah, I just want to give that context. And then my question was like, what is the small ILM's goal at the moment? Or what is it trying to do? Because doing another implementation, I'm not sure would be, you know, good use of time. Like, because we have lane chain for J. We have um, a Spring AI. There's the um, I forgot the the other Microsoft one um, escapes me. There's a semantic kernel, oh, yeah. uh, and and a few others that are out there. Um, I think it'd be awesome to get the Lang chain for J to have an SPI, and then you know once things maybe calm down a bit in a few months. Um, from there, have a hey, there is some of the stuff on the chat service level could be, let's say, specified, but leave a lot of it up to the implementation. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know JPA, but in JPA, there are this hey, there's the spec, but there's also here's an escape hatch to go and use the specific vendor kind of thing. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna shh. Shut up, my, my, Max, my question, yeah. Max. Just, just uh, one thing to um, you were talking about the Azure SDK. Just an example of let's use the Azure SDK. We are um, we are now changing all the samples, all all the documentations to say do not use tokens to when you invoke a model. And the good thing is, um, when which, which documentation? Sorry, oh? which documentation? Sorry. Uh, no, uh, I'm saying that with Langchain 4J, if you invoke the Azure OpenAI, uh, in the builder, you go, oh, here is the, the token of the Azure OpenAI. Uh, please invoke the model. And we are trying to remove that. Uh, we will still support it, but uh, passing tokens along is not safe. So you yeah, mean security tokens? Yeah, security okay. token. Sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry for the confusion. Yeah. <laughs> API key. Let's call it API it. keys. And uh, so now, if you remove that, if you remove this API key in Langchain 4J, because it, it uses the Azure SDK underneath, the Azure SDK will try a bunch of things. We'll see first if you are logged in to 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 Azure. If not, if there's a if there's a certificate, if not, if there's a credential related to the group, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until yeah. it doesn't, you know, cannot connect and will ask for an API key. Just to say yeah. that, to all these things will become more and more specific to model pro, uh, pro, providers because I know Google is doing kind of kind of the same thing. Yeah getting rid of the API keys. So just, you know, uh, relying on a Azure SDK and Google SDK and AWS SDK, sometimes it's it's way easier than trying to implement all these. Uh, so, 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 get, get, but this is so, so I actually think that that kind of behavior, like I see, I see the value on it, 
but it's extremely bad from like a use of control. Like imagine if your JWC driver would do that, right? If you've got a connection database and it would go through five or six ways of authenticating to look it up, it is it is the wrong place to put that. Right? Yeah, but it, JDBC is a specification and all the database vendor try to more or less support it after 20 years. We are talking yeah. of, you know, something totally brand new. Yeah, but, 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 but again, I, I, so this is, this is a good example of, I see the value. I'm not saying it shouldn't be possible to, hey, I would like to use, a, let's call it a driver that can automatically go and figure this out. But to do that, right, it is basically, oh, like small right config can no longer influence anything. Right, uh, or Corpus config, or Spring config, or whatever. So I bet you, once you like, once you start using these libraries correctly, you would do anything to turn that off because you you want to make sure it's wired correctly. Right, like I I this this kind of behavior is nice to have, but it's definitely anti like. Like, just imagine the number of CVEs you can have if you want to have yes. these, these things in, right? So from the end, like, let's call it the, like a Jupyter Notebook kind of perspective. Hey, it's nice. It figures it out and, and, and does it for me. But from an enterprise application, I, you want that layer below to just do what is told, not try to automatically wire it, right? Yeah. Um, so I, this is what I'm, I'm saying. I'm not, like, there is... Some use cases for it, but it's also like the 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 um, it becomes impossible to com uh, you know combine. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, and I, I would argue that as we had this problem a bit, uh, a lot of stuff where they try and guess things. Like uh, a good one is my my school drivers had this thing. Oh, if you didn't provide a username and password, it will open up a swing dialog. Right? That one's absurd, but it's in the same ballpark of, oh, let's go look if you're logged into Azure. Go look if you're X, Y, Z. Again, nice behavior, but but it's it's not a thing you would want by default. And it's something that you want to, sorry, let me not try. You want to be able to control it. Um, and again, I if in Java 20 years ago, there's been a way to wire things up, like that everyone agreed on across the whole ecosystem, everyone would use that, right? Um, so, so anyway, but ignoring the usability, there's the whole stuff that, hey, it is just a REST API that's using OpenAI to talk. Why do I need to have all of Azure stuff included if I'm talking to uh, get our models from my local laptop? There, the, there's a whole yeah TNDI. Oh yes, exactly. You should do more TNDI. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, so I, I'm not clear. I'm not saying there shouldn't be these super helpful vendor implementations that are doing that stuff, but I'm just like pushing clients that does this kind of behavior is just kind of. It adds a lot of dependencies and, and overhead that you don't want to have if you want to have like small and efficient applications. Um, so, um, yeah. But it, otherwise, yeah. I saw the other one was the what was the name? I've forgotten uh, the guy who added it. Uh, J Hipster guy. Uh, he was pointing out customers want to use that, and that's that's cool. Right. Just like uh, yeah, Julian Dubois, right? Um, it's not like Microsoft want to use the MSQL driver, but you know, there's a big difference between the MSQL driver, which require like inherent specific knowledge, and a HTTP client that talks to a REST endpoint. Um, so anyway, um, in any case, I think it's good to have an SPI. Um, have have that in in place. JNDI is actually really really good. It was just giving too much power. <laughs> That's another discussion. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I think in general, um, uh, not try to reinvent uh, the wheel um, and using a library that almost does the job is better than having uh, a specification that is based on one single vendor's uh, API. So I really would prefer that. And I think that's the way the camel people uh, choose uh, to base their integration um, on Langchang uh, for J2. So, yeah, uh, but having, uh, yeah, drivers uh, for uh, uh, vendor-specific APIs and maybe drivers for vendor-specific models, uh, as we discussed earlier, um, uh, might be uh, necessary and maybe the best way um, might to contribute that to length chain for J first and then uh, base the standard um, uh, on top of that. I just, yeah, so that, that's been our philosophy about like what we looked at Langchain for J, right? We see Langchain for J as the one that has the most uptick. And then from that, you know, build on top and see if you can extract something. Um, yeah, in the worst case, uh, another opportunity would be uh, having drivers for libraries that do the integration, uh, but that creates another layer. Uh, uh, it would be nice if we can prevent that. Uh, can you try and formulate what you mean by the difference? Yeah, uh, if uh, we want to support multiple uh, integration libraries for uh, LLM uh, integration um, in one single spec, we could say, okay, uh, we have a provider uh, for uh, microprofile LLM that supports Langchain for J, and we have a provider for OpenAI directly, for example, um, using OpenAI in Microsoft. Uh, uh, and the last two will not make use of Langchain for J and uh, develop their own. But yeah, then we have another layer of integration and uh, configuration um, that I would like to prevent. Um, uh, yeah, so just if I understand correctly, when you say the Langchain for J is an existing library today, OpenAI is a, is a API. It's not a there's no library you can use. Yeah. Some, maybe your comparison like oh, you have something that could use semantic kernel and um, uh, uh, lang chain, yeah, I, I think that, yeah, that that's that gets complicated. I think what the way I, I compare it to, and it might be a bit too naive, but it's like the high lang chain for J being like the hibernate of of, of AI, right? Um, where yeah. it 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 talks to these different uh, vendors and has these different abstractions, and then over time there was there's a something that can be derived. Oh, we all agree that something called a table. That's all the all database. There's all, there's all these Gen AI models. Okay, they have a chat interface. They are all the same. They have a blocking version. They have a, 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 a streaming version, um, et cetera. Oh, they all have this notion of tokens. So they all have a notion of um, embeddings. Uh, and then there are ways to Escape that and then use the more native API. Um, that that as I see as possible, eventually. Um, but there's just so much stuff moving at the same time. Like, yeah. All right. To give an example, we are trying to implement multi multimodality, so image and text and and things like that, and it's way harder than what we anticipated. We try to shoehorn something in something that has not been designed for that. So APIs would have to, well, some APIs and some support would have to break to get that in nicely. <clears throat> yeah, and that's a general aspect. Uh, um, uh, the APIs are moving fast, um, and then it's really hard uh, to catch up uh, with a standard. Um, 
with a micro profile uh, release cadence of three le releases per year um, uh, to support the latest API version of vendor XZ uh, with the latest model uh, he offers um, that might be really hard. And uh, there we, uh, to base the specification on a standard uh, of, uh, or the standard on a library that uh, does that uh, and can catch up more frequently um, might really help um, to not divide the forces. Um, because, yeah, if we have to change, uh, do breaking changes uh, uh, in um, specification API releases, uh, that will be horrible uh, and not create use for end users. And the main issue uh, at the moment, as far as I hear it, uh, from people who use these APIs in uh, production um, environments, uh, is that uh, the vendors always change something uh, and break something. Uh, so they decide to run their own model uh, locally uh, and not rely on external uh, APIs because they don't want to change their web shop or whatever they built uh, every time uh, the vendor decides uh, to do that breaking change. So having uh, a library that uh, solves most of these issues um, and stabilize and generate a general model uh, and description uh, as an abstraction uh, for uh, making use of LLMs would be really helpful. And based on that, a standard uh, could make sense. But if everything is moving, then um, uh, to create a standard from it will be really hard and less of use if it changes uh, all the time. Yeah. So just, just to make sure, what I'm hearing is you're saying the same thing as I think me and Clement are saying, right, that that there is a need. It would be good to have a stable one, but right now the situation, like in the whole ecosystem, is still moving. And therefore, focusing on, on making, uh, like working on getting the stuff in Langchain for J to be decoupled where it needs to be decoupled um, has the best value for the Dow ecosystem uh, currently. Um, and then, yeah, come up with a spec from there makes sense. Yes, Emmanuel? Yeah, I was just thinking that also the, the I mean, Longchain project provides um, an abstraction on top of existing clients. Like you said, like a, like a GTB subscriber. One of the one of the issues also that we have is that uh, there should be some kind of uh, let's say lower level uh, S, uh, specification or SPI or whatever. So that I mean because because currently uh, it brings uh, I mean each driver brings a, a whole ecosystem with itself and not just uh, a driver. I mean that's that's why I, I that's one of the points i think that is uh we are currently eating as an issue uh is that um while uh, i mean there has, there has to be some kind of translation in between uh long chain 4j and let's say azure uh github whatever uh and um there, there should be some way to to simplify or to 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 to, to have some kind of uh of SPI to be exposed from the driver so that we can uh, have some kind of single, uh, what's a sing single underneath or uh, bar, bar, it's a close to the bar metal uh, library that you could use. So, I, but I think that's that's what we 100 percent agree with, right? And that's 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 why uh, we said in the beginning. Well, for example, the GitHub models issue is like, hey, that one really makes sense to uh, support with uh, a client, but having that force to be, whatever, whether it's a Spring client or a Quarkus client or a Vertex client or a Microsoft client, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, 
It's just that they are they are two the the Azure ones or the Google ones they they pull in a whole thing, and fundamentally it's a REST API. Uh, that it should not be uh, forced upon you um, to to have it. Um, and that that thing you talk about, like that, that should we be SPI? That's the one that we tried to do in the OpenAI blank chain, but that was a very that was like we did that like ten days into <laughs> last year. I think this uh, is one of the things people that definitely okay. Now we've done this for a year. Let's step back and and what can we do there? Because um, right now we actually in a situation where we are re-implementing stuff that we didn't shouldn't have to in Quarkus to to avoid pulling in like gazillion of dependencies, right? Um, and and then I this is why I'm pretty sure Spring why they do it is that they want just to have clean clients, and um, and that makes sense. Um, and uh, for Langchain for J, it's a balance between well, not accepting those and then not growing, and uh, having a clean one. Uh, oh, sorry, if we accept them in, then we have this problem. But we at least have a library that is used uh, used everywhere. And if we don't accept them, then it doesn't grow, and then everyone will go fork their own. So it's a balance, and it takes time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what I mean was just to have some kind of uh, API or as well as API, but that is defined in long chain that we should not enforce, but at least encourage <laughs> people to, yes. to, to use. I mean, that's, that, yeah. that's I, I agree that it's not something that we can enforce, uh, at least for, for now, but uh, that's something that. that I, be... I, had a, I had a chat with Clement this morning. I said, like, well, we should, it would be nice if we had a. SPI, we, let's call it the clean room. So it'd be like dev line chain clean. Dot anything that's under here is is a clean uses the uh, HP SPI, and then there's a a muddy, <laughs> which is here's all the other stuff. You can still use them if they have the same API. It can work, but uh, you know danger. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, that's that's not where we are uh, today. But I, I, that I think that is. If you want something that is used, uh, can be used across the Java ecosystem, we need something like that. That that uh, uh, where things get isolated. Yeah. Uh, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah I apologize. Um, I, I need to drop. I made Emmanuel your co-host, so hopefully when I drop, it will not stop the recording and it will not end the call. <laughs> but, but the icon says exit. There is no like leave. It says or sorry, it says end. So I'm going to try and click the button and leave the call. But Emmanuel, I'm hoping that it just gives you all the privileges. All you got to do is end the meeting and it'll save the recording. <laughs> Thank you. OK, here we go. Hey, we are still here. No, John's still here. Uh, he's, he's, yeah. he's still here. <laughs> it's still recording. It's still recording, yeah. OK. OK. <laughs> <laughs> the, the good point. I hope I will be able to save it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I was wondering, because you got all the Quarkus experience. Um, so basically, if I understood correctly, Quarkus work for integrating long chain was some kind of creating this clean um, stuff you're talking about, right, Max? Yeah, so, so this is so. Yes, the, the simple version is yes, right? So no, we... well, for the LLM provider, yes. Yes. For right. the embedding store, we have been using the other way because it was just impossible as when we started, everybody on earth was implementing their own vector database. So it was absolutely impossible for us to implement everything. So in that case, we say, hey, okay, come on. Yeah, so it's basically in Quarkers, we are not happy. Let's just say, are we happy with integration? Uh, yes, because it works, and we have something we can play with and play around. Is this what we wanted to end with? No, because we have to. When the oh, I, I can't remember these, but for example, the Open AI implementation, we are not reusing the one in in the land chain, but we do we reuse some of it. But we have another SPI for the Vertex client. But for example, if the GitHub models one. Uh, yes, we. I believe we can use the one that's in Langchain, 
uh, from using Azure SDK, but we prefer not to because it drags in like the whole world of, of reactor APIs and stuff, which is just unnecessary baggage for calling a REST input. Um, Right, uh, and, and it will not work in native without a lot of work. Yeah, but, but that's that's the whole 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 challenge, right? Um, and then there are cases where we literally just said, "Hey, this is not a priority of us having a clean one." So, like, I think the I can't remember the, but so it's a mix we've done, right? Um, okay. But we had the same need of, "Hey, there needs to be some decoupling here," and what we're trying to do is to get that into Langchain for J, and that be the place where that SPI happens so that this benefit everyone and not just corpus. That's the that's that's the goal. So we but basically the issues you're seeing is the same we having. We just surviving because we've picked a few that that uh, we we can and most of them are using the open AI API and then we can we can kind of wing it for the most of it. <laughs> um, but we can still. Um, like we have a, a some C, uh, uh, not, they're not CDI annotations, but like annotations that could in the future become like CDI beans that you have that are standardized. Um, but we, at least my experience so far is saying, well, some stuff is nice to have declaratively and in other places, I just want to use the raw, uh, you know, API. Uh, so, and, so, and, yeah. We we need the two paths. We 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 yeah. never satisfy all the use cases with only one. So it's yeah. it's clear that we need both the declarative AI services and a programmatic API it, it, where you can build and manipulate your sensors you want. And just because I like hybrid algae here, it's just like hey, some people like JPA and uh, declarative uh, entity manager, and other people want stateless or native SQL. Like those two, those just two use cases that are. Um, are also present in in LM uh, land, um, and another and another thing that's again, it's also very hard to very to put the line. But another, I'm assuming in 2025, there's be a lot of stuff that is not Gen AI, but yep. using more predictive AI, and there's the whole inference engine stuff that's coming. Where hey, it, yep. right, that that you can do right. Um, so it's going to be a lot of experimentation uh, before we have something clean. So someone was talking. No. Oh, okay. No. So, Emmanuel, so I think we are on the same page on on the issue. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, with that. Yeah. Of, of where it is right, and and um. What me and Clemo would propose is that, hey, let's try and find ways to make that happen in, in Langchain land. Uh, uh, at least that we will have to be keen on, on making that that thing that that happens yeah. because we need we need it. <laughs> um, we as in Quarkus, but also in the Java ecosystem. I think. Yeah, I I I think currently the question is more where where is the place where we should make it happen. I mean, where is the place where we should define this kind of uh, yeah. cross everything? I mean, is it small wire lamp? Is it uh, long chain itself? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, currently what we have is some kind of uh, basic CDI integration of this long chain, which uh, enables us to build some of uh, the, what to create uh, a long chain service. Uh, basic uh, for basic rag, which was the initial uh, goal of this small YLLM uh, project. So that we have, it's very bound to a uh, long chain API because it, it exposes it, it uh, directly. Yeah. yeah so, I, that, so currently, that's I mean that one of the I think one of the questions is where where we should make these things happen directly long chain. I, or should we we have some kind of uh, I would say neutral ground to, to discuss the things? That... I, I just put my comment because it's the one I've had, and I think a whole uh, before we're given to Jan. Well, for me, I think there's two aspects here. One is the technical difficult, like technical challenge of where to decouple the 
ASP clients and model clients, right? I, that's not something you can define in a spec. It's like you have to go and be, get the hands dirty. I feel that should be happening in Langchain for GA because it's the most broadest of all the ecosystem out there. Um, there. And then there's stuff about, hey, should there be some CDI beans and, and adaptations? That feels suitable in, in, in small right LM, at least on my, uh, as, a, as a thing to do. But you're hitting the same issues that we do in Quarkus. Like, how do we expose this without exposing the underlying library and that kind of thing uh, too much? Um, yeah. So I, but again, I, I think it's too early to do it, but I think it could be experimental with. Um, but it, it, everyone has to be ready to change the API because it's, it's just too, too evolving. Uh, yeah. And I'll stop talking. If you have. Yeah, I think uh, the answer uh, is do it on both levels. So uh, having an implementation like Quarkus uh, or SmallRay uh, in detail um, uh, that integrates uh, Langchain for J and uh, then bringing um, as a request uh, and uh, requirement for such a library like Langchain for J these business related aspects. So uh, I don't want to uh, get too much dependencies uh, involved. I want to control uh, the communication. Um, I, I want to do it in a standard way so I can use an, a standard implementation to do a REST call, for example. Um, uh, and we have an example where that worked in the micro profile context uh, as we did the integration for uh, micro profile telemetry. Um, uh, to integrate open telemetry uh, into microprofile. Um, yeah, we had some uh, feature requests that we forwarded uh, to open telemetry to get them implemented there so they can be used and solve issues uh, on the microprofile sites without adding APIs uh, because the goal uh, we had uh, for MP telemetry, we want to use the uh, uh, open telemetry APIs one-to-one, -one, not adding something in a micro profile uh, namespace uh, to it. So you can directly use that and make use and benefit from the existing integration with the open telemetry APIs. And that worked quite well. It's slower, of course, uh, instead of doing all the things um, by yourself, uh, which implements, you need to re-implement the wheel. Uh, um, but um, yeah, it was the right way to do, I think. And that was successful. So having some efforts in Langchain4j and on SmallRai, uh, for example, um, uh, to bring these integrations into the right direction um, might be the right approach. Yeah, so, so I think we, we should reach for a conclusion just a bit over time. Uh, so well, I think that what we can, we can say that we all agree mostly on, on what is to be done and uh, what we should keep on experimenting on, on small LLM. Uh, we, try, we will try to, to, to have a release or uh, have a release and then uh, yeah, maybe try to, to also propagate. Well, do you want to add a note in the meeting notes so Emily knows because I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at meeting notes but uh... <laughs> Yeah, I might I might re review the the whole discussions and. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, well, I can I can try and add something. Uh, yeah, just a short notice. Uh, we will have the recording for the details. Well, yeah. For her. Um, yeah, not. Enable. 
Yeah, I tried to summarize it as I could in the notes. Feel free to correct me. If, uh... Any here except, I know Claremont is going to be there. Anyone else is being at DevOps next week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just in case because we there's a bunch of of line chain people there. So uh, well, if you if you have coworker or colleagues that uh, want to discuss the matter, just yeah, ping us. We would be very happy to talk with them and to to meet. Yeah. I have a set of brainstorming sessions to do with Georgios about multimodality already, uh, but happy to include more people in in the in the huddle. Who knew that pictures would be so hard? <laughs> hey, it's just text encoded in Base64. Yeah, exactly. I say, well, that was my thing. Well, it's Base64, it's text, so no problem. Yeah. What, are you using Langchain for multimodal? Or... Yes, yeah. There's a lot of to... Yeah, go ahead, Claude. We, we integrate that inside AI services by making the AI service use an image model when we detect one of the type being a picture or an image. And it works, but it also has uh, consequences that we need to handle. And then how do we, can we replicate that with sound, videos, whatever. So that makes things a little bit harder, but we will make it. Okay, is the issue here the at caucus level or the line chain for J? Because line chain for J has the raw support, right? Yeah, yeah. So you have the raw support. Uh, you have the, the builder support. There is no problem. But as soon as you integrate that at the AI service level, uh, which is not supported by long chain for J, only Quarkus long chain for J, uh, things get a little bit more hairy, let's say, uh, because of your context that may include messages that cannot be mapped to text anymore because they are pictures well base 64 oh. text if you want but but basically if you pass that to a model that does not understand pictures he, he will freak out and probably well he will hallucinate so we we need to find a proper way to to have conversations like this to have a to under memory when you have multimodality there are yeah. strategies like we did allow it. We evict the message that are unsupported by the model. So there, there are approaches that we just want to sit down, make pro and cons, and decide what we want. Yep. Unfortunately, I will have to to leave. I think yeah, we have done everything. Well, you, you, but just Link chain for j has the support. Um, it's yes. more specifically with the core. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. So I hope Emily got her answers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you will be back. <laughs> well, she can ping me directly. She knows that already. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think she'll be focused on her DevOps talk. I think she's back into speaking now. Oh, OK. I didn't see oh. your name. That's cool. OK, great. Uh, well, we will meet her. Meet her and that yeah. is all good. All right, cool. I need to go. Bye, everyone. Yeah, bye. You're on. Uh, no. Okay. Thanks. Bye, bye. Bye. Stop recording.
notification 